Hello, everybody. So today I'm here with the brand new version of Android Auto. When I updated the app last night, it updated to the brand new version. So I wanted to bring you guys this latest version to the channel as soon as possible. This is the third revision of the Android Auto interface since it came out, or the third major revision, known internally as the Cool Walk revision. And it has a lot of changes that I want to show you guys. So we're going to go into a deep dive into this new system, show you guys what's new and what is improved. So according to Google, the main idea behind this revision is just to make the things you need to access the most more available with less button pushes. So you'll notice immediately, just looking at my screen right now, we do have a different look. That's because, of course, with any redesign, we do have new graphics and new animations. What we're on right now is a new default home screen. So that, of course, is something that actually didn't even exist with the previous version of Android Auto. All you had was the list of applications or being inside of one of the apps specifically. Now we have this nice home page arrangement. Now, one of the really important elements about this redesign, though, is something that will be different on everybody's car. That's the fact that it adapts to screen size a lot better than before. So right now, what I'm demonstrating is in a super widescreen format here in a BMW 3 Series. Um, so as you can see, it does fill up the entire display. Now, if you have a, a smaller display or something that's square or vertical, it will automatically be able to reconfigure the arrangement of the home screen and the button, sometimes at the bottom, things like that, to fit whatever screen you have. So I'll click on a few different buttons here. As you can see, the animations shift around. It looks really nice. Um, and on this home screen, what you'll see on the side, closest to the driver is your most recently used application. So it comes in different sections. So it's your most recently used navigation app, your most recently used music app, and your most recently used communications app down there on the side. You have quick access to your Google Assistant and then to get to that traditional menu that you're kind of used to seeing with Android Auto, you're just gonna press that button. It's gonna bring out your app tray. So this essentially is just all the apps that are Android Automotive compatible on your phone being here into inside of this app tray. Now, the default is gonna bring a map display right here closest to the driver because while you're driving, that is probably the most likely thing you are using. Right now I am in Google Maps um, with the satellite view enabled. The other popular option is usually Waze. Uh, both of those do work the same way, but as you can see, very nice look to this. Um, so we've got it in a split screen default. So over here on this side and occupying this space is going to be a music application. You don't have to have that over there though. One of the nice things is that you can tap this once more. That's gonna collapse that off to the side and this goes for all of the applications. So you can run them in a full screen. And like I said earlier, it adapts to your screen size. So even though this is about 14 inches, it'll go ahead and expand all the way across that for a really, really nice look while you're navigating. Now, just like with all previous versions, you can turn on and off traffic, satellite, different route options and stuff like that inside of your Google uh, Earth, or excuse me, Google Maps navigation. Now, for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to pull back open our side panel. Let's talk a little bit about that. So like I said, over here is going to be your music that's currently playing. So the updates here is the fact that you can see um, album art really vividly. It kind of takes up the whole display. That looks nice. Um, one of the things you can do is swipe over here to the side, and that's going to give you quick access to other playlists. So Without having to go into Spotify and go through a bunch of menus, I can swipe over here and be like, oh, I'm tired of listening to this. Let me switch to another playlist that's just quickly available to you. I like that feature. Now, of course, one of the other main concepts behind Android Auto is being able to do things safely through your phone without having to actually touch your phone. One of those things is going to be text messages and the messages you receive while you're driving. 
So one of the big changes here, and I'll go ahead and let Mason send me a text message so I can demonstrate this, is going to be how the notifications are handled. All right, so my message just came in. So just like always, I can tap this and have it read aloud, then I can respond verbally. But pay attention to what happens when I ignore it. So see, I didn't react with it immediately. It has now shifted over here to the right-hand side. So instead of feeling that pressure while you're driving, oh, I just got a text, I've got to quickly click into this, or I'll later on have to go into a notification shade, Google's actually cut that step out. So it just shifts over here to the side, you can relax, and when you're ready, when it's safe for you to do so, now I can reach over here, I can do the same interactions. I can press play, I can have it read aloud to me, I can respond verbally, um, I can also, if I'm in park, you know, make some different Reply types of text from Mason. quick What's replies, as you can see. Um, so since I'm in park, I can just quickly click on one of those things and make a reply that way. Now for the sake of demonstration, I'll go ahead and click on this. Okay, what's the message? Thank you. I got it. Thank you. Okay, it's sent. And there we go. As simple as that, you're able to see that message come in, click on it, and reply to it. Now I'm going to shift that over to the side here and we're going to take a look at a few more of the applications real fast. So inside of our calendar, um, this of course is your Google Calendar and it tells you if you have anything planned at the current day. I don't have anything going on because we're filming this on a Sunday. Now one of the neat things about this is that you can actually integrate in the calendar with the meetings and the traffic that you have for the day. So say you have in the calendar, I'm going to a meeting and I'm also navigating to my work spot and I'm stuck in traffic. You can actually make this where it automatically sends a status update to the people that are also in the meeting, your coworkers, and tells them, Drew's stuck in traffic. He's going to be five minutes late or 10 minutes late, or this is when he's going to get there. That's a really nice touch. Again, that's hands-free. You don't have to do anything to make that happen. And that is, of course, safer because, you know, less that you have to interact, the better. Now I'll pop back in and we'll take a look and see if there's some more apps. Of course, you have your traditional things like your messages that goes for Google, Google Messages, and you also have Facebook Messenger and any other message apps that you might be using. Clicking into our phone app. That's gonna show you your uh, recent contacts. You can also scroll through everybody that you know. A lot of people like to listen to podcasts. Of course, all the things I told you about the music that does apply to podcasts as well. And you can also listen to news. So you can just click and go through your favorite news outlet. They'll read you all the top stories that are going on currently in place of music if you prefer to get educated. Now heading into the Spotify application, of course this also works in a similar way to what you would think. Like I mentioned earlier, you have the ability to open it on either side, and as you can see it just kind of slides back and forth, which is really nice. Um, right now it's playing a song. One of the things I do like about this is that in a past version you had to click into a sub-menu to like a song. That is thankfully gone. I'm really happy just to see we got the big heart there. So one click you can go ahead and like a song that you have playing. Once again, you know, you just want to minimize that distraction behind the wheel. Now the same as always is your Google Assistant. That already was very, very excellent at picking up on your voice and uh, giving you all types of functionalities. So you can still say, hey Google, navigate to the nearest Wendy's. Okay, Wendy's, here we go. And there we go. 
Um, so as you can see, it does, you know, have that extra context where it can figure out what the nearest is, nearby, all types of really useful things to make sure you don't have to click on your phone to find what you are looking for. Now, as far as the performance is concerned, of course, a lot of this is going to have to do with your personal device. Um, if you're using a wired or wireless connection, this is a wireless connection. I've got a Galaxy S22. But as far as my experience with it so far over a couple days here is it's really nice. Um, everything seems to be really fast. The animations, as you can see, pretty smooth. Uh, no real like laggy situations are going on. Everything here is pretty nice overall. And of course, over time, you know, this is going to be changed. This is the very first version of the new design. So you'll probably, you know, might experience some bugs or something like that but that's all going to be updated over time as we go past version 8.9, which is the latest version of Android Auto. Now, speaking of that, I do want to emphasize that this is a staged rollout and this is what is known as a server side update. So what that means is just because you update to Android Auto 8.9 on your phone and get the latest version of the app doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get the new design quite yet. Google is updating this over the server and it will just come to your phone randomly one day. There's no real order. I was lucky enough to actually get this pretty quickly. It appears that just a very few people have gotten it so far, which is why that we wanted to go ahead and make this video to show you guys all the details before it hits your phone, hopefully in the next week or so. Anyways, guys, that's going to conclude our in-depth look at the brand new Android Auto. This 2023 update to the cool walk design is certainly a welcome thing for me. Um, of course, Mason has an iPhone, I have an Android. So we're very familiar with both versions and I really like what they've done here. They took some of the really positive things that we've observed that we like better about Apple CarPlay and actually added it in to this software, like the ability to have the full screen map. Um, having the home screen I think is a big deal for us as well because sometimes you want to have multiple apps up at the same time and depending on the type of screen you had before Android Auto would really struggle with that especially if you had that smaller display but anyways I hope you guys found this to be a useful video make sure you go down below and subscribe to see not just tech videos of course we have lots and lots of automotive content for all kinds of vehicles so take care and we'll see you next time